You guys asked for it and here we go. Today I'm going to be guiding you through the process to get this amazing render right here. I'm going to be showing you my tips, tricks and techniques here inside of Substance in order to get to this a very cool result. We're going to go over color, we're going to go over preparation, generators and all of the different layers that we need to properly get all the maps that we're going to be using to generate this image right here. So, are you up to the challenge? If you want to do it, you can actually get the files inside of our Discord. I'm going to have the head with the proper UBs and the bakes ready so that you can do the exercise, follow along, and create an amazing render as well. That's it, my friends. Let's go. Color of our character. The best way to pick a color is to go online, look for this skin palettes, and just pick whatever color is closer to the character you're going for. Now, since this is a very like traditional or basic uh, skin texturing uh, tutorial, I'm going to be going for what like most commonly we see unfortunately i would love to see more representation but we're gonna go for like this sort of range of colors over here um substance does have the option to use the color picker and go outside of the software to pick a color so i'm gonna pick uh, this color right here it's gonna be very pale sort of like vampire look i want to go for this sort of like ghostly effect and the way i like to to build my skins is i like to start with a very like traditional skin and then tweak it or modify it so that we get a slightly different effect now, this technique that I'm going to be showing you, I learned from an amazing teacher called, um, oh, what's her name? Madeline Scott Spencer. There we go. She currently works at Weta, I believe. She's an amazing ZBrush artist. I learned this like 12 years ago or something. And I kind of like rename it the clown technique because it's going to appear like our character is a clown. And here's how it goes. First, we're going to create a red layer. And this red layer is going to represent the hot areas of our face. Again, I'm going to turn everything off and I'm just going to use a sort of like a dark reddish color right around here. Very important, every single layer or at least most of the layers that we're going to be using will require some sort of uh, like blending mode. In this case, I personally like using overlay, sometimes multiply, depending on the type of effect that I'm going for. In this particular case, since I want this sort of like death, like Again, vampire skin, I'm going to go with multiply. I'm going to add a black mask and we're going to start painting all of the areas where we would usually find a high amount of temperature or pigment. Now, you can do this in multiple ways. I personally like going here to my uh, dots layer and I'm using this dots erase. This is very cool. As you can see, we get this sort of effect right here. This is a, a very traditional technique that has been used for a long time in the special effects makeup departments where they use airbrushes to generate a lot of... Um, like complexity on their characters i'm gonna turn on a symmetry i'm gonna release or not show the intersection there we go so that we can just like paint normally you can use the wacom tablet by the way but the, one of the most important things about this particular step is you do not want to make your brush big because if you make your brush big you're gonna have super huge elements you want to keep the size of your dots very very small and yes this is going to take a little while to to be able to like cover the whole character but it's going to give you a very like natural look so i'm going to be covering all of of the areas where i would expect there to be a lot of blood flow or a lot or big muscles so for instance the nose actually you think i'm gonna go to overlay so it's a little bit redder there we go so the nose is gonna be one of them around the eyes around the mouth okay here on the jawline right around there all of this right here you could also use a layer like a fill layer with like a generator like a noise generator but i always feel like when you actually do the work and and use your artistic hand to to get as, as much of a detail as possible you you usually get better results it looks way more natural it will it looks way way more realistic even though it takes a lot a long uh, longer time this is something that i mentioned very frequently 3d i know i sometimes rush things or speed run things here in the channel but 3d is one of those things that definitely takes time that's why you can charge quite a bit for it, your work because it requires a lot of precision and a lot of uh, work to get things to look very, very nice. So, yeah, this is the first pass. Let me pause real quick and I'm going to continue just filling in the head. You don't want to oversaturate it. That's important. So, so don't do this like right there. That's way, way too much. You want to keep it subtle because we're going to be adding more layers. And when we add those layers, the new layers are going to be blending with this one right here and that's what's going to allow us to generate a very nice like believable skin texture so let me continue here with the with the process and i'll show you how it goes Another important thing is you do want to cover every single part of the character. There might be some areas like up here on the head where you don't want to have as much uh, density of red in this case, but you do want to have a little bit of pigment everywhere. Because otherwise, again, when we add the rest of the colors, it, it's going to look like it's missing a little bit of something in certain areas. Take your time, don't rush it, and make sure you cover every single part of the model.
Again, don't forget not to change the size of your brush. You want to keep it consistent because if you start making the brush bigger to cover other areas faster, what's going to happen is you're going to have some very big dots or from very small dots in certain areas, and it's going to look very ununiform or uneven. So you want to keep the same thing, the same size, even if it takes a little bit longer to get to the final result. There we go. So as you can see, now we have this uh, red layer. And what I would like to do is I always like to do, let's say, the traditional layer, and then I add the procedural layer. So I'm going to literally duplicate this one, Control-C, Control-B, and then I'm going to add the black mask. And this black mask, I'm going to add the generator. And this is going to be a very basic like dirt generator. The dirt generator is going to allow me to get a lot of like deep, like red saturated colors on the crevices of the character. But this is way, way, way too much, right? So one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the overlay a little bit. In this case, like 35%, so that we can get those nice shadows and those nice like contrasts without overriding all of the other things that we're about to do. Now we're gonna do the next layer, and the next layer is one of my favorite ones, which is the blue layer, and it's the deep crevices, the shadows, the um, um, the concave areas and areas where, where things become very, very cold. Now here, one of the things that you can do is you can actually not use blue. Normally blue is the color that we use, but I find blue to be very aggressive as a color, so I prefer to go for the sort of like purple colors that are a little bit closer to red, but again, we got a sort of like cool effect. So I'm gonna call this a blue. There we go. This one, I'm also going to set to something like an overlay. You can see it turns into pink, or we can go multiply. I, I think in this case, I prefer multiply for this one. We're going to add a black mask, and the blue color is going to go in all of the shadow areas of the character. So areas where you want to have a lot more depth to, to the character. So for instance, here, underneath the eyes, that's a great point to have a lot of blue. On the nostrils, on the lips, lips tend to be a little bit darker than the rest of the skin on the inside of the of the ears and every single place where you see a little bit more like a concave area or big wrinkles that's where you want to have a little bit more depth a little bit more um in, in spanish we call it profundidad i don't even the depth is the proper word but profundity sounds interesting <laughs> so we're just going to add a lot of this color right here i do think multiply is, is becoming a little bit too much let's go back to overlay in this case as you can see overlay looks not bad to be honest a little bit too purple now similar to what we did with the red color we're gonna be adding this color every single place of our character we want to cover every single area but there's going to be certain areas where the concentration of this or like purple pigment is going to be a little bit more intense there we go for instance here on in the corner of the of the nose again as you can see i have not changed the size of my uh brush it's the exact same size that i had if you start feeling like there's too much of a certain concentration you can of course press letter x and remove a little bit of that that's one of the cool things about working in this particular way because some of you might be like hey this is the same technique that a lot of people show when they're doing poly painting characters with zebras and yes it's the exact same technique the only difference is that this technique is more procedural because we can modify the intensity of the layers we can modify the blending mode of the layers and we can modify the layers themselves if we need to paint in or out one of the things that i don't like about poly paint is that once the paint has been like attached to the pixel or to the vertex it's it's not possible to remove anymore so we got to be very careful there so again, I'm just going to give a quick pass everywhere. I am going to be a little bit more aggressive on the blue areas right here. You can see I miss some red spots. So I'm going to go back to my red color and just like add a little bit of red spots here on the on the top of the head and usually the top of the head is a is a very cold area so i'm going to be using again my blue color to fill in a little bit more of this cold area remember that this is what i call the artistic layer where we we go in and we decide where we want to have uh, a little bit of more blue or a little bit less blue and in just a moment we're going to be adding the procedural layer you could technically do everything procedural however it, it will give you a good result i've done it before it's just that Adding the extra, again, the, the painterly layer, the artistic layer, is always such an easy thing to do. It doesn't require that much time, and it will give you way, way, way better results on your character. I know that right now it doesn't look like it. It looks very weird uh, for the character, but believe me, this is going to look very, very nice and very, very intense as we keep pushing forward. So we just add all of this blue color right here. There we go. 
Now for the procedural layer, I'm gonna, again, just copy and paste at the blue layer so that we have the exact same color. I'm gonna add a black mask so that we have a new black mask right here. There we go. And this one, I'm gonna add a generator, but it's not gonna be the dirt generator. Actually, I'm not gonna use this one. I'm gonna go to the field layers. And I'm gonna add an ambient occlusion. The ambient occlusion is the map that you get normally when you bake the character. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a levels modifier and invert that ambient occlusion. So as you can see, we can push how much or how little we want. And it's a lot softer than the, um, what's the word, than the overlay or the, this layer is a lot softer as an ambient occlusion layer than a dirt layer. Now, of course, we're gonna bring this way, 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 way down. As you can see, this is starting to give us a very nice uh, like depth to the whole character. And it just adds a lot more of a, an interesting tone. I might even change this to multiply. I kinda wanna go to multiply so it's a little bit darker. So we already have the, the purple layer giving us this like pink hues. And then this one's gonna give us the dark layers, kind of like an ambient occlusion layer. We can change, of course, the levels to see or, or tell it how, how intense or not we want this like a shadow to be. And a very good way to, to visualize how, how complex this mask or this colors are looking is by pressing the letter C and going into your color layer, just your diffuse layer. If it looks good right here, if you can appreciate the different parts of your character in this like flat layer, then that means that we're good doing a good job now we're going to jump onto the yellow layer so we're going to add another layer again only color and this new layer is going to be i like to go for this sort of like orangey mustard color something like like this we're going to call this oh yellow black mask uh, the black mask there we go and same process now the yellow layer it's going to be hitting the cartilages and the bones of the character so as you can see i'm hitting all of this bone protrusions that we normally see a little bit of the cartilage here on the nose the chin fat is also another point this character doesn't have a lot of fat but we can add a little bit of layer in certain areas the bony areas is definitely where we're going to see where we're going to be seeing a little bit more of the of the yellow color and the yellow color since it's a a value that's going to be a little bit higher not lower we want to punch it or push it higher what we're going to do is we're going to set this to a linear dutch and as you can see the linear dutch really really multiplies this and makes it super bright right compared to all of the other ones this of course is going to be like minimized we're going to go for something like a 25 or something and it's a very good way to bring in a little bit more light into the character otherwise with the elements that we had before we're going to have a very dark and very like a deep color and that's not exactly what we want so as you can see this one right here is going to bring a little bit of shine a little bit of light into the character uh we're going to go for instance here in the clavicles and this is, of course, just a bust, but this same technique that I'm using can be used with every single part of your character. Let's go here to the back. You can remember, uh, press control and right click to move the light so you can see like how things are working. So I'm just going to start adding a little bit more pigment all over the place. Let's go back to the blue. I feel like we're missing a little bit of blue on this areas. So I'm just going to add a little bit more blue color to add the... Like some interesting detail now i know that this looks like a very splotchy skin i have very splotchy skin and i have some like very ugly marks on my on my neck and uh the the thing is it depends on what kind of character you're going for but usually for realistic characters you are going to have like very intense um like contrast or variation on the skin we're going to soften this up of course it's not it's not going to remain at this exact like intensity we're going to soften up a little bit but it is important to have that variation we don't want to just have like a single like basic color unless you're going for the stylized effect you might want to check our stylized character uh, or text stylized texture tutorial i'm gonna see if i can link it over here but um in that one the colors are way more softer and a little bit more cartoonish so there we go now for the uh this is the like again the base layer i'm gonna control c control b and this one i'm gonna add a black mask again this one's gonna be a generator and we're gonna be using the metal edge wear generator which again is gonna hit the high points of our character like the eyelids let's go here to the to the channel view and you can see how this one like really brings in all of the high points of our element and at this linear dutch that's looking very very nice so with this done we now have a very basic like like um what's the word we have a very basic cover of all of the main colors that we're gonna have for our character the last thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna copy the main layer the main like color layer that we have and i'm just gonna use the 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 slider here the opacity slider to blur a little bit of those effects so you can see how we can bring this down and tone it down so we get the intensity or the complexity we could have been set this to like an overlay or something this one's a little bit too much 
Um, let's try Leaner Dodge. Leaner Dodge is not that bad. It's looking a little bit too pale for my liking. So I'm going to keep it at normal in this case and just blend it with Opacity. But you can see that we get this very, very interesting effect thanks to this field layer at the very end. It's breaking up the effects. Now, if you see a layer, for instance, I feel like my red layer is a little bit too intense compared to everything else. I'm going to go back to the red layer, this one right here. And what I can add is I can add a filter that's going to be a very basic blur filter. Now, 0.5 is too, way too much, so I'm going to go to 0.1 so that we see the dots, but it's not that intense. This one, as you can see, looks way, way better. So, yeah, this is the first stage, my friends, the very basic construction of your skin. You can save this as a smart material, even though you're going to have to modify the masks if you're using it for another character. But with this, we now have all of the necessary things to move on to the next stage, which is the layering to make the skin even more interesting. So, let's go. For the next stage, we're going to start building some of the complexity that we can expect on the skin. And it's going to be a little bit more procedural, even though there will be certain elements where we might need to add uh, like traditional uh, painting here. So for this one, I actually like to do it on a separate folder just to keep things under control, except for this first pass right here. One of the main things that's going to make our skin look like actual skin is something called subsurface. And we are going to be using like real subsurface a little bit later in this tutorial. But right now, I want to do a fake subsurface pass just to give this guy a little bit more life so on top of this layer i'm gonna add a new layer again this one's only gonna be color and it's gonna be a very bright red layer and i'm gonna call this layer sss then i'm gonna right click add a black mask right click add a fill layer or a, a uh, yeah fill layer and we're gonna look for the thickness map this way bakes are important because thanks to the bakes we get access to all of these maps and these maps will allow us to control things that would be normally like out of our control i'm all, of course going to add a levels as well and we're going to invert this and as you can see this pass right here this sss pass is already giving us the sort of like subsurface effect that we would expect to have on the character so this mask right here this levels is very very important we're actually going to be using it a little bit later this one i personally like to set to linear dodge as well sometimes overlay is also good depending on how like intense or not you want multiply in this case i think is going to be fair enough as well and i'm just going to lower the intensity there a little bit you can control how much of surface is being shown thanks to this levels this is one of the amazing things about the the levels and again this is why a substance painter is so cool because it allows us to have control over things that will require way way more time inside of seabrush for instance so we're gonna go right around there I feel like that's that's nice it kind of looks like he has a cold so i'm gonna just like lower this a little bit more and again we can press the letter c to better appreciate how this layer is adding a little bit more visual interest to the whole character so cool we got that let's add more stuff the next thing that i want to add is i want to add a green layer you guys know that skin sometimes thanks to veins and other things we can get some green hues every now and then and i feel a little bit of green on the cavities is going to really bring and and add more contrast to the character <laughs> so we create a new field layer i'm gonna call this green we're gonna choose like a like a nice like dark green something like this and if we set this to overlay again you can see how we get some very very interesting tones right here on the skin it looks like orangey and on the cavities which is what we're going for we get this very nice interesting effect this one, I'm going to add a black mask, and I'm also going to add a fill layer because we're not going to use the dirt. If we use the dirt, it's only going to go to the traditional holes. And if we want to go to every single wrinkle, we need to add a fill layer. And this fill layer, we're going to be using another one of our generator maps, which is, of course, the curvature map. So we're going to use the curvature map in this case, and you can see how the curvature is going on the outside. So we need to add, of course, a levels and invert this. And look at that. Now we got this very nice green tone in every single element of our object. I think overlay is a little bit too much. Uh, let's try linear. Now linear dash is definitely not going to help in this case. We can try a little bit screen. Screen is like a little bit less than um, the overlay. We can try soft light. Oh, soft light looks really nice. There we go. And you can see the difference right there. Now, I'm going to push this contrast here on the, um, on the curvature map so that we only get the green hue or the green tone on the, um, on the wrinkles, on the, on the deep parts of the character. So you can see this is really bringing a lot of information. Again, we look at the, at the color channel, and this is what we get. I know some people here prefer to have like a blue color instead of a, of a green color or like a yellow color. I, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it can change. I, I think just for the sake of a little bit of contrast and just like visual interest, I want to go for this sort of like green hue. But you're free to change this however the, the art direction requires. So I'm going to go a little bit lighter there on the greens. 
because I, again i know that this is going to give me just some some interesting like dirt on the whole thing now that we have this, we need to understand that on the face, there's usually different areas where certain colors or certain temperatures, you know, happen a little bit more than others. So, for instance, the lips, right? There are there are going to be certain areas on the lips that are going to be a little bit darker, usually on the eyelids as well. So I'm going to add another layer, again, only color. And this one, I'm going to sample just a basic color, like a dark color here, and just go a little bit darker and a little bit more saturated. Usually shadow areas are a little bit more saturated. And we're going to do a black mask. This one is going to be done with a brush. And I'm going to change this to this like dirt spots so that we have a, a little bit of a break on the, on the brush as well. And we're going to use this to darken the lips in any areas of the character where we might feel like this needs to be like broken up. And the interesting thing about the pigments in the skin, and you can look at the mirror and get really close to the mirror so that you can see how your pigment is changing, is that these pigments are not like a perfectly makeup delineated effect. You're going to see a little bit of a, of a transition. So, so it's important that we try to, to capture that on the, um, on the irregularity or on the you know like separations on the different layers that we have right here so i'm gonna it's not really makeup we are gonna do a little bit of a makeup pass a little bit later but we do follow some like rules about it so it's just darkening certain areas that are like naturally darker so for instance here on the inside of the ear a little bit underneath the the cheekbones a little bit here on the on the side of the head and here, since we're using a very like broken brush, you can definitely push some of the size a little bit more. And this is also going to allow us to blend a little bit of what's happening here with the character. This is here underneath the mouth. All of this area. Now, this character, for instance, has a mustache. You probably saw the action video that I did recently. It was this character right here. So since he has a mustache and a little bit of a, of a goatee right here, I am going to like pigment or a little bit more pigment on those regions as well. You we can add a little bit more pigment on this area, even though he's uh, shaven. We just like indicate that sometimes he might uh, leave his beard uh, grow a little bit more over here. Now this one, as you can see right now, it's a normal mode. And this is very important. I want you guys to take a look at the colors right here. If we set the layers to normal mode, what's happening is we're literally just having a layer on top of everything else. So all the amazing work that we did with all the other layers, it's being completely erased because of this normal mode. That's why I always insist on changing the mode to something that's going to allow us to blend them together. So in this case, like a multiply, because you can see when we multiply, we're going to start seeing some of the colors underneath the whole thing and the element is going to look a lot nicer. This, of course, is uh, way, way too much. So I'm going to reduce the intensity of the color right here. So I do want to darken it, but I don't want to make it uh, so that it overrides the rest of the element. So, yeah, as you can see, that gives us, again, a very, very nice effect. This is where I also like to add another, like, a blue layer. So I'm going to go for, like, a blue color right here. This one's going to be set to overlay. Or let's do multiply again to go darker. And again, using a, a dots erased, for instance, small effect. This is where we can add sort of like a like a beard effect, kind of like a like short stubble. And this is a good way to to merge things. I'm probably gonna go really, really, really small, even if it takes me a little bit longer to to just fill all of this in. Because as you can see, this is gonna give me the impression of all of the pores that are normally filled with a little bit of hair, right? I'm definitely gonna like blur this guys out a little bit so that it's not overriding all of the I love the things that we just did. There we go. And by building these layers, we're creating a, a sort of like an effect that's going to make the whole skin look way, way more interesting. And you can see it right here. Like just if we turn everything off, let's create a new layer. And if you guys remember when we were first starting, we just had like a very basic skin color like this. And look at how much intensity we can build upon on the top of that by just modifying and creating all of this like a really nice breakups on the on the textures itself now once we have this the next step is we need to start blending everything again a little bit more because i definitely feel like it's a little bit too noisy on the on certain areas i can also feel like the the size of the red dots right here is a little bit too much so we can definitely go to the red dots and then just add a little bit of red with smaller dots Bring this down as well, just like keep it a little bit paler. There we go. Same for the blue. You can see the blue ones right there a little bit too much. So let's like blend them down. It's going to start cleaning the skin a little bit so that we, we don't get as much effect. 
The next two layers that I'm going to be showing you are layers that are stylized or definitely stylized, but I feel like they add so much, much depth. And these are some light layers. You might not want to do this on every single project, but I think this one's going to be very good. So I'm going to add, first of all, a dark brown layer. So like this, again, only base color right now. Remember that we have the base roughness right here. If you want to see this in a little bit like flatter or matter, we can do that. And I'm going to add a black mask. And this one, I'm going to add a generator that's going to be a light generator. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch or push the light so that it's facing from the bottom up. Again, if we go to the channels, you're going to see that this layer right here is adding shadows to the bottom parts of our elements. Kind of like a like an ambient occlusion, but only hitting on the bottom parts of the character. And I feel this gives a lot of depth to the characters. So I'm going to set this, of course, to like an overlay. Now let's go multiply so it's darker. There we go. And look at how nice this is. This is without materials. And we can already see a very, very interesting breakup all across the surface of our character. So there we go. That's uh, that's a nice dark layer. I do feel it's a little bit too much, so I'm going to saturate it a little bit more. Usually, again, shadows tend to be a little bit more saturated. So I'm going to saturate it with a little bit of red right there. And then I'm going to bring the overlay opacity down. This is where art direction really comes into play. So when you're working on a project, you're going to be bouncing this with a client or with your uh, with your art lead. So they tell you, oh, that's way too much or, or that's fine, depending on, on the kind of stuff that they're um, looking for. And in the same way in how we have this sort of like a dark layer, we're going to have a light layer on top. So I'm going to change this and I'm going to go for like a like a very bright yellow solar color. There we go. Kind of like a light shining or like the sun shining. I'm going to add a black mask, another generator. And this generator is going to be again a light generator, but this one's going to be like pushing down like this. I'm going to change the highlight glossiness here. And I'm going to change the light attenuation so that it only hits like the top part of the character that you see right here, like the top parts of the lips and things like that. And this one goes into linear dodge. It's a very, very intense layer. This is really good if you want to, again, remember, this is this is just like the color map. If you want to do like a like hand painted sort of style, this is the same technique that we use for that for the orc head. So I really like how we are the kind of effect that we get with this one. So I'm going to go a little bit more more orangey colors right here. There we go. And of course, we're going to reduce this quite, quite a bit. It's just a, a little bit of a hint of light that we're adding to certain parts of the, of the character. And there we go. Now we can start talking about certain details. For instance, the blood, right? Like he has these big scars going around. And I'm just going to add another layer. All of this, guys, by the way, I'm just going to control G. And this one is going to be just a color layer. It's going to be a dark red color layer. Add the black mask. Technically, everything should be looking. Oh, actually, it's not going to look the same that we need to get out of the folder because this thing is impacting the folder in a different way. The other thing that we can do is just grab all of these guys and have them be on top of the SSS. And now the same thing is going to happen. The, the stack of the layers is very important. You, you guys should always remember that. So this color is going to be like a red color. This one, I am going to turn the roughness. I'm going to turn the roughness down for this particular one. Uh, eventually, this base roughness is going to be like overridden or overridden. So this one's going to be the blood. Of course, we're going to add a black mask. And again, with our layer or like this, their splash uh, brush, we can just start painting this area right here. Let's turn this off so that we can see the, the actual glossiness. Sometimes what I like to do is I like to also have this bit roughness inside of the skin so that we can have that one on while we also have this blood on. Layer. There we go. We should have symmetry turn on still. So yeah, it should be working on both sides. Perfect. Then it's going to be a little bit less blood there, a little bit deeper right there. And we're of course going to change the, the blending mode here to make sure that the that this looks like really like a deep, intense effects. So if we set this, to, let's say overlay, mm, that's way too much. Multiply is going to make them very dark, though. I mean, it doesn't look bad, but they do look very bad. So we can go to the original one and just increase the saturation a little bit. So we see more of a, of a red color. Now, here's the here's a pro tip. We're going to add another layer. And usually when you have a cut, there's going to be a little bit of inflammation around that cut. So I'm going to do a black mask and then make my brush a little bit smaller. And I'm going to go over the whole thing. And we're going to set this to linear dodge. So well, linear dodge is a little bit too much. Maybe overlay. Yeah, overlay looks a little bit better. And then we're just going to like reduce this intensity. So what that's going to give me is it's going to give me a little bit of inflammation around those areas, which again, it's a, it's a very common thing to have uh, close to a wound. Maybe not for a vampire, though. I don't know. They have a... 
like white blood cells and everything in the same way we do? Maybe. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Look at that. So we get this very, very nice effect there with the blood. So what other things can we do here? This is, again, where, where you can start exploring and thinking about other elements to add to your character so that it looks the best possible way. And for instance, especially in older people, you do get this sort of like dark brown like spots around the head, right? So I'm going to go again for a color. I'm going to go for like a dark sort of like brown color. Add a black mask. Oh, add a black mask. And then I'm going to grab this, again, dots erase. And now I'm going to go a little bit higher. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start adding a couple of spots on different parts of the of the especially on the top of the head of this character because he's bald right so a couple of spots right around here just to decorate the head a little bit more um veins veins are all also veins and um what's the word and arteries and all of those things are, are very important i think that that's gonna help the whole thing and we can do those procedural we can just create a new layer this one's gonna be let's say like a blue layer Add a black mask. We're going to add a field layer. And there is, I believe, a map here for Banes. There we go. So we got this Grunge Marble Banes and we got this Marble Banes. And both of them look eh, quite interesting. The only thing we need to do is increase the, the intensity here so that they're very, very small. And uh, once we have that, find the blending mode that works nicely. So for instance, that multiply seems to be working quite nice. Of course, we're going to bring this really, 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 really down. And you can see how we get this sort of like marbling effect. Of course, if you have a Bane's, like an actual Bane's texture, this is another way to do it. What I would like, usually like to do with this one is I add a paint layer on top of this thing. And I'm going to add a basic soft one to just remove some of the Bane's from certain areas that might be a little bit too visible. I think this is a little bit too much opacity. So let's go to like a halfway point so that we can see a little bit of the Bane's, but not, not too much. There we go. We can do the same thing. We just repeat this one right here. And I'm going to change the color of this veins from blue to red. Right now, they're like literally one on top of the other. But if we go to the modifier, to the marble veins, we can do another seed. And as you can see, that's going to give me a different effect. And we're going to see, again, more construction going around the texture of our character. Um, what else? What else? I'm trying to think if I want a little bit more. I think a little bit more blue, like a little bit of a, of a darker tone in certain areas might work. So I'm going to add a secondary layer here. Again, just color. Let's go for like a, like a deep blue. And we're going to add a thickness layer. So I'm going to add a generator. Not thickness, sorry, a dirt layer. It's going to be a dirt layer. There we go. And this one goes to multiply as well. This one's just to to really bring now, now we're going into like the grungy stuff, right? Like we're we're adding a little bit more dirt, we're making him a little bit more menacing, like an like an enemy or something. I'm definitely gonna bring the contrast down on this layer and the dirt level down as well. So that we're not like overdoing it. And again, one way you're gonna be able to check this is just press the letter C. If you press the letter C and it looks like the character is like complete, like if you have a lot of detail and you're seeing it on the pure color without any shading, then that means that when we actually add the shading, we're gonna have a really cool effect. So this would be, I would say, my um, my advice for, for general like skin tones here inside of Substance. Now we're going to start talking a little bit about material setup. So we're going to first set up the material here inside of Substance, and then I'm going to show you how to set it up inside of Maya and Arnold. So let's go. Now for the material setup, we need to take a couple of things into account. First, right now we're using this asm metal roughness material which is a very basic metallic roughness element but we do want to be able to see something such as the um as the what's the called that subsurface scattering so i'm gonna go here to the options and you're gonna see that subsurface scattering is indeed enabled but we are not seeing it we're not seeing any sort of like effect on the character right now it just look like a plastic doll or something so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go all the way to the top and we're gonna add a new layer but in order for us to be able to control the subsurface scattering and to tell this object that we want subsurface scattering to be happening we need to change a couple of things first on the texture set settings we need to go to the channels and we're gonna add a subsurface effect Effect. So we go here and we're going to add a scatter. So the scattering layer is going to allow me to control how much scattering I want the character to have. If I turn everything off right now and I turn scattering on, I can set this all the way to one. And technically, we should be able to see the scattering happening here. Why is it that we're not seeing it? Because even though the material has it enabled, we need to go to the actual display settings. And down here, we need to activate subsurface scattering. When we do that, now it's working. Now we're actually seeing what's happening here with the subsurface scattering. And as you can see, we're getting this very interesting effect. It kind of looks like the flat color, right? It looks like this, again, the sort of like a 
like jello we material we can change the options of the scattering here on the material itself so if we remove or bring the scale down it's going to be less intense and if we bring it up it's going to be way more intense i usually recommend setting it at 0.5 just so that we can see what's going on because later on instead of maya we're going to be tweaking the values to make sure that we get the actual effect but how can we control this like scattering a little bit better well one of the things that we can do is we can turn on the color we can say hey this scattering is going to be like a red scattering you can see the effect there a little bit more obvious and then we're going to be adding a black mask and we're going to be using the thickness map again so i'm going to go to field layer and i'm going to look for the thickness map of my character there we go we are of course going to invert that thickness map so we're going to add the levels and invert and this is the subsurface this is real subsurface that we're getting i know it looks very similar to the old subsurface that we have but this is again real subsurface now here what i want to do is i want to make it a little bit more intense so i'm going to push the white color up as you can see it's going to affect a little bit of the skin a little bit more but i don't want the ears and the nose to be that intense so i'm going to push this one down as you can see, this thing balances the whole thing uh, down into, into a nicer effect. We can also use this one right here and clamp it a little bit lower. And the lower we go, the less intense of an effect we're going to get. So something like this. And again, just play around with the effects so that we get a more natural look for the skin. This is expensive in, in performance. Like you are going to see a hit on your performance if you have a, a low GPU, um, but it's it's necessary. Nowadays, games on Real Engine 5, they use like a really, really complex of surface map. Right now, this is like the super simple, just one surface map layer. One thing that I can do here, of course, is I can change the color of the surface. Right now, it's very red. But if I start bringing it down, we're going to have a little bit of less intensity. It's going to look a little bit paler. And as you can see, this is like the, the color that we're going to be using for the subsurface. And you can see the difference. This is without subsurface. It looks, again, not bad, but very fakey, right? Like this is how games used to look a couple of years ago. And now with the subsurface, it really brings the whole thing up. That's the first step that I like to set up. The second step is, of course, the roughness. If you remember, we have our roughness, our base roughness right here. And this controls the whole roughness of the skin. Of course, the skin is usually not super rough, but it's also not super matte. So we need to find a way to control and balance this in a, in a relatively easy way. First, I like to set this roughness as my base roughness. So let's say something like this. I feel like this is a, a good amount of roughness, maybe a little bit more, just so it's a little bit flatter. You can also press C and go into the roughness channel. There you go. And you can see right now a roughness map sucks. This is a perfect like that. This is a one way, by the way, uh, when I'm doing a portfolio review, which we're going to have very soon, make sure to submit in our Discord channel. When I do portfolio reviews and I check the roughness maps of whoever submits the roughness map, this is the first thing I look for. I want to see contrast on the roughness map because you, if you see flat colors, then that tells me that the student or whoever is submitting did not pay close attention to the difference that you normally see on the roughness of your elements. So how can we add a little bit of roughness? Well, the first thing we can do is we can extract a little bit of that roughness information from the cavity map, which is all of the wrinkles and stuff. So I'm going to add a new layer here. This is going to be called my wrinkles roughness. And I'm going to turn everything off except for roughness. And we know, again, usually wrinkles tend to be either a little bit rougher or a little bit drier, depending on how you want to go. Um, in this case, just for the sake of argument, I'm going to make them very dark at first, and then we're going to see if that looks good or not. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to add a black mask, and I'm going to add a fill layer. And on the fill layer, we're now going to look again for the cavity map of our character. Not the cavity, sorry, the curvature map, which is similar to the cavity. There we go. And look at that. We get this very nice variation on the pores, on the wrinkles, everywhere. And this map right now is, is masking out the rest of the effects. So if we go to the map, you're going to see that this one right here is giving me a very nice break on the silhouette of my elements, right? This, uh, again, this roughness map. Now, one thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that the roughness maps are playing nicely between each other. Because right now, this roughness map, as you can see right here, is not actually like... I don't think it's contributing to the whole thing. I think it's like merging it weirdly. By default, roughness maps should be set to something like an overlay or something, just to just to get something a little bit nicer. Multiply, whatever. So there we go. Let's do uh, overlay. I'm going to go back to base color. And here, if we change the effect, you can see that we can make certain parts of the character a lot more like matted or not. Wrinkles, I usually like them to be a lot flatter. So I don't want or, or I don't want to see as much uh, information there. So I'm going to bring this thing down, the skin information down. And you can see these wrinkles are breaking that information and they're toning down the whole effect. That's how we start creating some complexity here on the skin shader of our character. It's very, very basic a way to do it. Again, if we go to the C channel, we're going to be able to see this thing right here. 
Now, the cool thing is we do have certain elements. For instance, this one right here. Uh, where's the... Well, let's go to the to the map. Is it this one? I'm trying to look for the... That's the inflammation over here. So the dark color. There we go. So we have this dark color, for instance. We can go back to it and say, hey, I do want you to have a little bit of roughness because these are the lips and everything else. And I do want you to be a little bit glossier. So if we bring this glossiness uh, forward, we should be able to get a, a nicer effect right there. Let's jump again to the glossiness and let's see if it's actually like doing something. Let's go to the roughness map. And I just, I just want to check here that the, the upper layers are not affecting it. If they're affecting it, another thing is just to build everything like separately. So I'm going to create a new layer here called, called this Lips Ice. Turn off the roughness right here. This one's going to be a lot glossier. Black Mask. And we can use again something like the like the dirt map here to paint the glossiness. Let's go to C channel. Make sure that I'm the paint layer there. Ah, that's weird. Why am I not painting? Oh, I'm in this much much. Sorry. There we go. So let's go here and there we go. So as you can see, this is going to add a little bit more roughness to the lips. Of course, right now it looks very, very fake. The way to solve this is, of course, again, here in the roughness channel to use something like a multiply so that it merges with the other elements that we have on the roughness channel. And we don't have something that's like overly like intense. Uh, let's try an overlay. Overlay is looking a little better. And of course, we can also like diminish or reduce the amount of roughness that we have. Remember that when we're dealing with, uh, with maps, in the case of roughness, a... A darker color is going to make it a more shiny and a, and a lighter color is going to make it less shiny so for instance the the eyes right here due to the tears and everything i definitely want this to be a little bit shinier let's change this right here and there we go again i'm, I'm kind of like speed running this thing to make sure to make it entertaining but this is something that i usually spend at least a couple of days just working on a character to make sure that all of the tones and everything are as nice as possible you can see now how this top part of the eyes are looking a lot more glossy. Same for the lips. This character is also not complete. I've mentioned this before. This is just a, an exercise. And um, the mouth is not open. But ideally, you wouldn't want the mouth to be open. I'm going to, for instance, again, if we go here, I can see that there's not enough variation on the beard, which is usually rougher. So I'm going to add another few layer right here. This one, it's, again, only going to be rough. Increase the roughness quite a bit. Add a black mask. And I'm going to use the dots erase with a small size to like rough up a little bit of the beard right here so i want to break things up a little bit especially on the on the parts that i know are going to have a little bit of hair hair usually does not uh, allow a lot of moisture to be it, the, like moisture is going to start accumulating on the hair rather than on the skin so it's usually a little bit drier all of this right here we can even like add a little bit of dryness over here and, uh, and this is the interesting thing about like a roughness map. Roughness maps are going to allow us to break the appearance of the surface. And I'm going to show you one last trick that I like to use, especially for all of these lower areas or like big areas right there. Again, if you feel like this character is way, way, way too rough, that's why we have the base roughness. If we increase the base roughness, this is going to affect every single part. And again, I usually, in my experience, tend to go a little bit closer to the rough areas rather than going very, very glossy because it becomes a little bit difficult to control the glossiness later on. But this one right here, I like how it looks. It's looking very, very, very nice. So um, finally, the last thing that I want to show you in regards to roughness before we jump into exporting and into Maya is to add just a general roughness pattern. And here's where we can just use one of the skin layers that we have right here. If we look for this skin human, skin human flat, you're going to see that it has a lot of pores and things like that. I'm just going to drop it on the very top of everything here on the stack. And one of the things that you, of course, need to do is increase the tiling. Okay, so we're going to really, really increase the tiling. We're not going to be using the scattering from, from that one. There we go. And we're going to increase the tiling until we get like a very, very small, like poor detail. It's not going to be perfect. We have a 4K texture, but even then, if you really want to go for like super cinematics, you're going to be using UDIMS and a lot more stuff. So this one's just going to break up the general effect. I'm not going to be using hide information. I'm not going to be using color information. I actually just want to get the roughness information and not even metal information. So it's just roughness information that we want. And again, if we go to the roughness, you're going to see that we have this. So right now, all of the roughness that we've just painted is gone. How can we fix that? Again, just here on the roughness map, we're going to change this to something like a overlay, and we're going to be combining the roughness of this new map with the rest of the elements. And especially going to be useful for things like this on the nose, where you can see that we're really, really breaking a little bit of the element. 
performance. So it's just another extra little bit of, uh, of layering and information that we can add to get a nicer effect. And this is it for the setup here in Setup Substance. And now let's talk about how to get this into Maya. To export to Maya, the first thing we need to do, of course, is to save the file. If you haven't saved, I did save, don't worry. If you haven't saved, make sure to save. And we're going to go File, Export Textures, and we're going to, of course, set up the place where we're going to be exporting. I'm going to export it here to the Strat folder. And here, I'm going to change the elements to the Arnold AI standard, which is the one that we're going to be using. If we go to the list of exports, you're going to see that we're going to be getting the base color, the emissive, the height, the metalness, the normal, and the roughness. Where's the subsurface? We're not exporting subsurface information, and it might be a good idea to export it. How can we do that? Well, we can go to the outplay templates, and if we go here to the Arnold AI standard, I can just duplicate that one, and I'm gonna call this Arnold AI standard SSS, and I'm just gonna use the exact same presets that I have right now, but I wanna be able to extract the scattering information from the object. So you can see right here, we got the scattering option right here, which is exactly what I want, like how much uh, subsurface I'm using on this particular one to get this exact uh, like result, right? So what I'm gonna do here, if I take a look at the scattering, I'm gonna realize that this is just a black and white map. So technically, the only thing that I need is one like this one's right here. So I'm gonna create a new gray channel right here. It's gonna be PNG. I'm gonna go 16 bits. I'm gonna copy the exact same names of like any of these layers to get the exact same uh, information. The only thing I'm gonna change is instead of height, I'm gonna call this S. SS. There we go. And then I'm going to grab my uh, scattering uh, value right here and input it onto the element there, onto the gray channel. So what this is doing is, is exporting this extra texture. Technically, you can do this. I've worked in a couple of uh, studios and pipelines where they ask you to do a specific like setups and, and like constructions of the textures for specific engines or pipelines and it's all about understanding where the element is going to go now since the scattering value is a black and white value it's just where is it scattering and where is it not scattering this is the one that we're going to be using to control if we have an issue i'm going to show you another way in which you can extract this map as well so now as you can see we're going to get uh well of course let's go settings and instead of this arnold ai standard i'm going to grab this arnold ai standard sss and on the list of extras we should have this one right here uh, I got this question the other day. It's like, do we need to do PNG 8 bits? Can we do something like better? Yes, of course you can do something better. Uh, but usually 4K PNG is, is perfectly fine. PNG is a format that's not going to like suffer a lot of compression. So it's going to look a lot nicer than a JPEG. Don't use JPEGs. And uh, PNGs allows me to see the texture so that I can show it to you, my friends. But usually I would probably change this to a Targa. I usually like using Targa as well. So uh, yeah, let's just export. And now if I uh, open the output directory, you're going to see that we have all of this information right here. We have the color, the height information, which in our case, we're not really going to use. I don't want to use displacement right now. We have a very like high poly character. Um, the metalness, which again, there's no metalness, so we're not going to use. The normal information, the roughness information, and look at this beautiful thing right here the SSS information, which parts of the characters have more SSS than others. And this is what we're going to be using to control that effect. So let's jump to Maya. Here instead of Maya, I'm going to be opening the file that we use for the action effect. So let me open this one right here. And uh, the action thing, uh, that's a different video. If you haven't seen it, one of our top videos right now. So make sure to go and check it out. But that's this one right here. And the reason why I want to use it is because we already have the light set up. And it's just a matter of setting the models. This was a decimated mesh. You can see that this is not working exactly as I would like. So I'm just going to delete it right now. We don't need it. I'm going to go File import and if we go to our strat folder i'm gonna be importing the strat low effect this one right here so as you can see even though it's a low poly or low element it still has like a really 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 high density we're at uh, 37 36 000 triangles so quite heavy not super heavy nowadays games can definitely handle something like this but it's not usual so we're gonna go to the hyper shade and we're gonna start building the material i'm gonna create a new material right here with um, tap I'm gonna look for an AI standard surface. And there's a bunch of different ways in which you can bring the, the textures in. I'm just gonna drag and drop them. I'm gonna call this Strat Skin. There we go. So if we go to the folder and we grab these four textures, we're gonna be just dragging and dropping them here on the hyper. There we go. So that's the color. That's the normal. That's the roughness. And this is the subsurface scattering. So color goes into color, very simple. Not much to do right there. 
Roughness, we need to change the color space to utility raw because we want to respect the colors that we have instead of substance. We don't want any color management. And now we're going to take the alpha. We're going to connect this into the specular roughness. Why the alpha? Because remember, the alpha is a single value. And that's what this little like green dot is expecting, a single float value, not an RGV. And the color is usually an RGV element. Now, in order for the alpha to be like properly processed over here, we need to go down here and we need to say alpha is luminous. So it knows that if it's whiter or darker, that's going to be transferred into the alpha as well. Don't change anything else. The normal map needs to go, of course, to a normal map uh, layer. This also goes into utility raw. We don't want to change it. You can use a normal, uh, like a normal map, or you can use a traditional like uh, 2D bump map. So if I go here, for instance, and I go to geometry bump mapping and i input the file i'm automatically going to get this uh bump to d node which is the one that we're going to be uh using right now and uh yeah it's just a matter of deleting this one and the normal information again the alpha goes right there this one i don't remember if you need to turn on alpha is luminous but i'm just going to turn it on and this one very important we're going to change to tangent space normals technically we were working with OpenGL instead of substance so we should have the exact same texture here inside of maya Let's give it a shot right now. I'm going to press Control S. And one of the things I want to do is I'm going to turn off the hair. Uh, I just want to focus on the, on the skin right now, and we'll see the final result in just a second. So let's do a... Um, wait, do I not have a shot cam? And of course, we don't get absolutely anything because I forgot something very special. I forgot to set the material. <laughs> so I'm just going to right click on the character, assign existing material, and we're going to assign, of course, the strat skin material. You can see that we have the preview here on the viewport. Looks very, very nice. I love that. That gives me a lot of hopes. And if we hit render, this is what we get. There we go. Not freaking bad. This looks very, very good. Keep in mind that we're not using displacement. This is kind of like a game character that we're seeing. One of the things that I'm immediately seeing is that the colors are, or the lights are way, way too intense. So I'm going to lower the exposure a little bit. Let me do that very quickly here. So this one is at 17. Let's go to 16. And this one is, I believe, at 17 as well. Let's go to 16 as well. Let's try that. Remember that the lights are exponential when you're working with exposure. So that's how we can get that. Ooh, that looks very, very, very nice. Now, I'm also going to change the framing of the character. So let me go to the camera right here. Panels, look to select it. Something like this. There we go. I want to... Because this is going to go on the thumbnail for, for uh, YouTube, right? So yeah, this looks good. I, I still think like the light's a little bit too much. Like this one right here, I'm going to move it a little bit to the side so it hits the, the side of the character a little bit better. And I'm going to I'm gonna go to, down to 15. I felt like it was a little bit too much rim. Like, there we go. This one still feels a little bit intense for the, for the kind of skin that I have. So I'm also going to bring this down to 15. And the main light right here, I'm going to set this to minus 2. So that it's a little bit darker and we get a lot more conscious. That's way, way too low. <laughs> I like the lights a little bit better, but now this one's a little bit too low. So I'm not going to set this to minus, minus one. There we go. So let's bring that up a little bit. There we go. That's a little bit more intense. Usually, usually, let's go zero. That's fine. So I, 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 in this case, since we're not doing any sort of like cinematic or anything, I just want to make sure that we can see the, the skin in, in the best possible way. So this is looking good. It's, it's a good result, but we definitely need this surface scattering to really, really, really make this thing uh, amazing. So in order to do that, this is where the surface scattering comes into play. And a lot of people get confused about this step. I've talked about this one before, but it's always a good idea to just um, keep going over it. Just a quick rem like a parenthesis. I, I heard a phrase not too long ago that said that for someone to remember something, they need to hear about it at least seven times. They use this a lot for marketing and things like that. And uh, it, it made a lot of sense to me because when I was at school, almost what, like, damn, almost 10 years ago, <laughs> when I was a student almost 10 years ago, I... Um, I had the I had the question of why are we going over like the same things about modeling the same things because we had like three or four different classes about shading and it was the same thing and normal map goes here raw information here and it's just like the same repeating patterns it's because you need to hear it a lot of times in order to make sure that you understand it so over here I'm actually gonna disconnect the base color of the character and what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna turn the base color off we're not gonna be using base color we're gonna be using subsurface we're gonna turn the weight of the subsurface on and we're 
going to connect the out color of the base color into the subsurface color. By doing this, what's going to happen is something very interesting. Instead of having this skin right here look like just a flat uh, like skin, we're actually going to see the subsurface effect going on. And you can already see it here on the um, on the ears. We get this very interesting sort of like translucent effect going, and it's looking more like a like a gummy character, right? Well, a couple of things that we can do. First of all, on the on the subsurface color or on the surface radius, rather, we can try to change this to a red color. I don't like using the perfect red color because when you do that, yes, you're going to have like a very intense red on the skin, but you're also going to have like other like hues on other like areas of your character. So just be careful there. It's a very common that people want to jump and just change the surface here to red. I prefer keeping it to white and just adding a little bit of a pink tone right there. And that's going to give you something that looks a little bit more natural. Look at that. If you really want to saturate your character, I mean, go for it. I'm not <laughs> I'm not your boss so you you're, you're free to do whatever you want I'm just saying from a personal um, like experience don't make it too obvious because then it looks very fakeish the problem right now is that we're getting this surface effect happening everywhere on the character it's it's just like affecting every single pair of the character uniformly and this is where the map the SSS map that we extracted comes into play because as you can see right here the weight of the subsurface will affect what parts of the character get more subsurface surface than others so i'm going to grab this right here and the out alpha is going to go to the subsurface value this one we also set to alpha's luminance and since it's a black and white image we're going to change this to a utility raw and there we go by doing this what's going to happen is again very interesting is we will only have subsurface on certain areas but we are also losing some of the color that we have on the character so even though we disabled the original color we now need to re-enable it so that we multiply the original base color of the object or of the character with this new subsurface pass that we're getting because right now we're getting a beautiful subsurface here on the ears and the nose and certain parts of the character but we're losing a lot of the color so going back to the material we actually need to have the out color on the base color again and we need to push the base color all the way up once more so this is how you control or one way in which you can control your surface scatter you have your vase color and on top of your vase color you're gonna be adding this sort of like surface effect that we see right here looks very subtle right now and this is where again um, understanding a little bit of how nodes work can be very useful we can definitely like push this a little bit more intensely right there to make sure that we get a, a nicer and more like a deeper red on the on the ears but if we want to increase the amount of surface effect that we're getting what we actually need to do is we need to change the value values of the image that we have right here if you remember over here you can see that the values of the surface they're not as white right like this white right here is not as white so if we really want the super red color right there we need to add another effect right here and we can do that by adding an hsl uh, effect or hsv i believe there we go so remap hsv so if we take the uh, out color right here and we map this to the color this out color is going to allow me to transform whatever we have right here. So, for instance, the value, if we push this value up or down, we're going to be able to make the whole thing a little bit more subsurfacey. We can change elements to make certain parts of the element more subsurfacey or less subsurfacey, depending on how we want it to be. But this is what we can do over here. We're not really going to be using the uh, elements over here. And now from the out color, as long as we're using at least like the red value, that should be more than enough. So when we do that, what we're expecting to see here, since we changed the values and they're lighter, is we're going to be seeing a little bit more of the surface effect. Let's uh, save an image to compare. And when we render, we should see a little bit more subsurface. You can see it right there, how things become a little bit smoother because we're getting way, way more subsurface on the character. And that's pretty much it. Let's just bring the, the description from action back in. Um, in order to see it, we need to go to the action menu. Just refresh it and refresh it right there let's go that's the beard let's go to the mustache and just there we go so now the whole thing is refreshed and we're combining a lot of advanced things here for our character to generate a very very cool result so yeah this is pretty much it my friends i hope you liked this video it was uh, a little bit more technical and more advanced than what we usually do if you're just a beginner and you're watching this because you're curious about the process well welcome to the 3d world my name is abraham leon and i can teach you a lot of stuff we have advanced courses or not advanced or we have our premium courses where you can learn a lot of the basics so later on you can jump into this kind of um 
into this kind of processes and generate amazing looking characters. But this is one of the techniques that I like to use to hand paint a very realistic looking texture for our characters. There's a lot of methods out there. I'm not saying this is the best one or the only one, but it's a very, very practical one. And as you can see, with relatively little time, we can achieve an excellent result. So hope you guys like this video. Please, if you did, let me know in the comments, leave a share, like, just subscribe and help us grow and get to our goal. We're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of this year. We got two months to go. So hopefully we can achieve that very, very soon. Thank you again, my friends, and I'll see you back on the next video.